Hey, I'm Brett Henry. I'm the Vice President of Marketing for Abacus International. I think travel procurement is a relatively uh, new field in, in this region of the world. So while North America and Europe have a really, really high degree of maturity around managing travel as a procurement item, uh, most corporate travel managers that I, I talk to here uh, don't even don't even think about the word procurement, and most travel budgets aren't being managed within uh, a procurement organization or even within the CFO's uh, uh, domain. It's typically managed by uh, a centralized administrator who could be uh, anything from a low-level manager to a secretary or an admin-level person who's really more of a coordinator, tries to make the travel process as easy and work as smoothly as possible for travelers, but not someone who's looking to optimize spend. I think there's there's two two dynamics around the travel as a procurement item in Asia. One is the the global MNCs are now beginning to truly build out global programs. So they've always talked about wanting to manage the travel spend you know globally, uh, but they've really been focused on trying to capture the big opportunities in their home markets, North America and Europe. But now that they've conquered those and begun to spread kind of horizontally across more products, not just air, but hotel, car, meetings, even sort of services, um, they're also looking to other countries and, and where can they go and capture and manage that travel item. So, so you know, leaders like Cisco, uh, McKinsey, uh, GE, Motorola are now successfully implementing you know, global travel procurement programs um, and leveraging all the tools that go along with trying to optimize a program. Um, whether it be corporate online booking tools um, or RFP automation tools um, in order to capture initially the air and then as soon as they get the air right they move into others. So they're going country by country now, one at a time, um, and, and successfully establishing that. Now the local uh, Asian companies typically haven't valued that, place much more value on the personal relationship and trying to make things easy for the travel. But the downturn has begun to change that. So the dynamic of both the multinationals moving into the Asian markets and with this travel procurement approach, plus the downturn has caused lots of Asian-based organizations to take a closer look at opportunities for savings there. And they're beginning to do some of the things that would show they're looking at travel uh, more and more as a place that they can look to gain savings um, and adopting somewhat of an optimization mindset. We think the corporate travel market probably won't see a, a dramatic uptick until uh, the second half, uh, second to sorry, third to fourth quarter of 2010. Um, and and even when the return starts, we think it'll be a much slower return to the traditional volumes, uh, a much slower return to the to the volumes we saw post downturn. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is is the topic we just covered, which was uh, Asian-based companies and NMCs taking a, a, a global approach and inside Asia beginning to manage travel as a procurement item. So using tools like corporate booking tools or instituting policies like pre-trip authorization. Um, these things are all enabling organizations to take a much closer look at travel. Why are people traveling? How are they traveling? How long are they traveling? Where are they staying? Um, and all their alternatives to either trade down to make that cost lower or avoid that meeting altogether by using other tools such as video conferencing. Um, so once you institute a policy of, of this type, it means uh, this will probably stay in place even once uh, the economy comes back. Um, so the chances that companies, uh, both uh, the global companies operating in the region as well as the locals, will continue to, to take a much closer look and scrutinize uh, their overall travel spend, or in a positive frame, look to optimize the T&I budgets they have. Um, is high. So even when the uh, uh, downturn uh, begins to subside and we start to see an uptick, um, I think it'll take a, a, a much longer period to return to pre-downturn levels in the corporate space. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.